Okay, so we're ready whenever you are. <laughs> okay. Good evening. Um, five o'clock, and I would like to welcome everybody to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter and chair of the Amherst Design Review Board. I call this meeting to order. I want to note that uh, we are meeting virtually tonight, but uh, we probably will be uh, working uh, on another plan uh, after the summer so that the uh, mandated virtual meetings are no longer uh, in effect. So I'd like to begin with a roll call. The members of the design review board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes uh, and acknowledge your attendance. Lindsay Schnarr. Yes. Okay, Janet Marquard. Jan. Present. Present. Okay. Erica Zikos. Yes. And Tom Long. Present. Okay. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under Section 3.2 of the Zoning Bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay districts in the town center, the design review overlay district and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant, board applicable land use board and building commissioner. All right, uh, and now we have uh, on the uh, screen our uh, agenda. Okay, We're, our applications. I can't at least know that can uh, Get this. All right, so we, uh, Maureen, did you want to uh, invite the applicant in for DRB FY2021-22, the sure. Sweet Alice Conservation Area? Or you yeah, sure. Okay. So we have Rob Mora present. Okay. He's the uh, building commissioner and he'll be talking about the proposed uh, new parking area at the Sweet Alice Conservation Area. Okay, very good. So, there we are. Hi, everyone. Hello. <coughs> uh, Maureen uh, prepared a nice little presentation. Do you want to oh. get that oh, started? Oh, OK. <laughs> OK, give me a second. I just pu pulled together what Rob did. OK, hold on a second. Uh, actually, hold on. I'm going to just download it. I have it on my, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's see here, <coughs> desktop. Or that's okay, actually. Let's just do this. Can everyone see this? Okay, okay so uh, there's a, a street view on that first uh, slide that we just scrolled past, but that's the, the area we're talking about. It's uh, just east of the 
uh, roundabouts uh, around Atkins there. Uh, there's a good image of that where the star is. Those several parcels, uh, including the one that shows the pond. Uh, if you can go back, Maureen, mm -hmm. um, please. Thank you. So several parcels where the star is uh, to the to the west uh, and to the south are uh, town of Amherst conservation properties. A uh, series of trails through there. Uh, this parking is specifically at the uh, head of the uh, Sweet Alice Trail. Uh, you'll see when we get to the uh, plan that we're making a connection to the existing trail, but we're also uh, preparing for uh, some expansion of trails that will be occurring over near that pond, uh, which is the property that's surrounding the Kestrel uh, Land Trust office building is that white sliver of uh, parcel right next to the pond, uh, to the right of the pond. Uh, so that's the area we're talking about. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, these existing conditions, uh, you'll probably have to zoom in if you need to see the, uh, the, the street photos, but there isn't any formal parking now in this area. Uh, cars just uh, park along the side of the road there and what's now worn out in the dirt and gravel area. Uh, in that image, that top image is the sign that you saw in that first slide. That is the, uh, the, the initial access to the trail. So we're looking to create uh, a formal parking area up to 20 spaces uh, shown there in red. Uh, there's a possibility that one or two rows uh, furthest south could be eliminated. Uh, and it might be a slightly smaller lot, but it certainly isn't going to be any bigger than the 20 spaces that we're about to uh, take a look at. Uh, if you want to go on to the next slide, Maureen. So here's a uh, 20 space parking lot. Uh, it includes one handicapped accessible space at the beginning of the uh, South, uh, Sweet Owls Trail. Uh, this parking lot is going to be crushed gravel finish uh, except for the apron out at the road, which would be paved to, to meet the town uh, curb cut specifications. Uh, there'll be a couple of signs, uh, one identifying the, the trail parking, uh, either that sign that was shown in one of the earlier images will be relocated or one will be created, uh, typical of what the conservation department does. I think they usually do a, uh, a wood sign that gets routed out with the lettering and then painted, uh, and that would go out front where Maureen was just pointing in that location. Uh, the town has a typical uh, kiosk, and we can show you a picture of that after, but uh, that'll go right at the beginning of the trail, uh, informational kiosk loaded, lo located right there. And otherwise, for signage, there'll be one uh, accessible parking sign right at the head of uh, parking space number five there. Uh, to, uh, to reserve that parking space for uh, accessible placard vehicles. Uh, over to the uh, west corner, the northwest corner, there you can see it's showing a stone dust expansion there. That is where I was talking about uh, the possible connection to new uh, trail locations in the future. Uh, that's a project that the Conservation uh, Commission is in process of reviewing or will be soon. Uh, so that's possible for a project to come forward soon. Uh, we're looking to uh, install split rail fence to both the east and west side of the parking area for the, the length of the parking area, plus a little bit to the south. Uh, we're looking to add large boulders to the south of the parking lot uh, to prevent just far enough to allow for snow removal, but uh, to prevent vehicles from parking off of the uh, new gravel area. Um, this is all sheet flow uh, towards the uh, west and south. Uh, there's no drainage structures or anything underground for utility or lighting or any other, uh, you know, construction or equipment that's not shown here on the, on the plan. Um, I think that about covers it. Um, yeah, if there's uh, there's there's a little bit of grade change there on the uh, that that north or, sorry that south uh, east corner of the lot. There'll be a little bit of a cut, uh, resulting in a slope uh, area there that's uh, not natural slope that's existing, uh, but otherwise it's relatively flat uh, finish uh, and 
yeah, if there's any questions. Uh... Okay. All right. So this isn't a parking area is not connected to the uh, that small development heading uh, south on 116, sort of right across from Atkins. Uh, they, there was some discussion about the homes and then cars driving in to access the, a trail, but that's- Yep. That's so that, that's not this one. That's, okay. That is a different trail right. uh, access and there will be a couple of very small couple of uh, parking spaces in that location. Okay. All right. uh, between the first two house sites on that uh, in yeah. that development. Okay. Very good. Uh, any, uh, uh, Lindsay? Um, first, this looks great, and it's exciting to see parking there. I actually have never been on that trail, so now I'm determined to go. But um, I'm curious about the, the designation of the trailhead and um, visibility of that being kind of limited based on the first few spots on the northeast side um, and I just wonder so you said that that area that's just to the north of parking space five which is an ADA uh, handicap parking space um, that's going to be uh, is that a different material or is it just going to be striped I guess it's gravel so you can't stripe it yeah um, it's it, right so it's it's all gravel um, you know we're we're considering possibly, uh, you know, painting or chalking it initially. Uh, so to back up, we're actually, we're doing several of these across town. So we're looking at a number of the uh, trail parking locations to make improvements. Uh, this is the first one that is new work that is being reviewed for permitting. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're going to decide whether or not we try to stripe or uh, chalk uh, in a way that just hopes hope in hopes that uh you know change uh or or establish a parking pattern uh but probably not long term if we did it uh just once that would probably be it so it will be all gravel and it's probably going to be i'm looking at material right now for another one that we're about to start construction on and uh you know probably like a three eighths uh, uh aggregate for a finished material uh, which is going to require us to either stone dust or uh, you know, use millings or some planings or some other material at the accessible space in the loading zone, as well as the, uh, we'd like to use the same material for the access to the uh, trail, uh, right, right at the trail uh, beginnings, uh, just to have a nice, smooth, uh, stable surface to get started on the trail. Uh, so we're still working out the exact material and it, it bear, what I'm finding is it varies from uh, location where it comes from. So I'm actually physically looking at the product that we would be getting to make that decision what we'll use, but uh, it's got to be pretty fine and compactable for the accessible areas. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge with the gravel material, how to define spaces to begin with and then how to define an entrance and an accessible zone. So um, I think that's my only concern here is just, um, you know, really being able to indicate that that's where people should, A, not park and B, um, be able to walk through to get to the beginning of the trail. Um, so it sounds like you guys are trying to figure that out. I don't have any great ideas at the moment, but I'd be curious yeah. to hear other people's thoughts on that. I'll just add the only other idea that we, you know, we, we might look at is using the, uh, the posts of the split rail fence as indicators. Mm -hmm. uh, so either lining those up at the center of parking spaces and again, mm -hmm. temporarily, it's an opportunity to put signage up or mm -hmm. some sort of markings, but not, uh, hopefully not long term. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I guess I'm curious also about the potential of pushing the trailhead to the north at the parking space one location, um, if there's an advantage to that, or um, if you've looked at that. Uh, cer certainly a possibility, sure. It might just help with visibility and, and perhaps, I don't, I don't know, just reducing the amount of kind of confusion around which space is reserved. But again, I'm kind of curious to hear other people's thoughts on this and, uh, Erica, 
it hadn't occurred to me that the visibility of the sign, but I think you bring up a really good point, Lindsay. And I, I think that moving the trailhead, either extending it to parking space one or perhaps pulling it out of the the back of the lot, mm -hmm. you know, between 10 and 11 um, might be a solution as well, because that would be visible for everybody coming in. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good, it's a great question. Um, my question was about uh, receptacles for trash and maybe recycling. I think that when we invite lots of people to gather um, and have kind of a formal starting point, I know that there's already trash there and it's kind of informal parking lot. Um, it might be nice to have something there to contain it. Encourage people to have good mm. practice. <clears throat> and that could probably go near the, the kiosk. Um, I don't think it needs a, a concrete pad or anything, but it would be nice to include that in the, in the project cost. Okay. Do they traditionally put bike racks in these uh, trail parking lots? I have not seen them in the ones, I haven't looked at them all yet, but the, uh, the locations that I've been to, I have not seen those, no. Okay. Seems to me that the kiosk will make it clear where the trailhead is if it stands out wherever you put it. Um, and I we think- do, having, We do have an image of that. It's a pretty substantial- uh, Structure. Structure, yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, and it, yeah, see, I mean, that's pretty oh, wow. clear. I like the idea of having it either either where it is or further back, as Erica mentioned, because if you are opening a car and kids are getting out stuff, the further from the road, the better, because um, Bay Road is pretty fast through there. Also, if you put trash cans, what do you have to do for emptying them? Do you have to like put them on some sort of town circuit of going around all these? So it just adds to your route or how does that work? Yes, so these, these areas are managed and maintained by the town's conservation department staff. Uh, so it's not something that public works would have in their route for trash pickup. So yeah. um, probably why we don't see the trash containers at these locations, but that staff is charged with cleaning, uh, you know, checking on and cleaning these locations. So uh, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a uh, good suggestion. And I think I'll have to bring it up with the conservation director uh, Dave Zomek, who manages all the uh, conservation and recreation areas, and see if that's uh, something he's interested in having at these sites. Great. It looks really nice. I'm glad you're going to do that. I go by there 10 times a day, and it really isn't very, very conducive to stopping right now. So it looks good. Yeah. And people often stop on the other side of the road um, and also park. There's a whole other area that they pile up on on the other side. Uh, I had a question about the, the parking identification sign. Is that one of your, the smaller white signs that are etched with the name kind of like is, is existing now? It, it, it is. So that sign right there would either be relocated. Yeah. Uh, I, did, I did hear that the conservation staff is making signs as well. So they're, they're routing them out of wood. Okay. Uh, so it's possible that there could be a new sign, but similar to that, that that's what its intent is, is to identify the, the trail. Okay. I mean, uh, to be honest, they, I mean, I'm, I'm always looking for them and I can see them and read them because they're, you know, they're white and they stand out, but um, it might be really difficult for some people to read that sign from a distance. Um, you know, they're, they're relatively small. I'm, I'm sure they'll see the parking lot and the kiosk, but, um, you know, for a parking area, it's different than marking the trailhead, right? The trailhead, you're a pedestrian and you're on foot and you're next to it. Um, but when you're buzzing by in your car and looking for it, something that's perpendicular to the road um, and something that might have slightly larger type to identify in the parking area might be helpful. So I, it might be a consideration I would have just because I feel like a lot of these wayfinding signs are pedestrian based and not vehicular based. So just another thought. Um, otherwise, I, I think everything's great and uh, super excited to see um, parking and I'm interested to find out where else you're doing it and uh, I'm excited to see that. I'm also um, interested in Catherine's comment about the bike rack. I don't know if it's just even a single loop you want to pop around somewhere. Um, 
might be really helpful for people who want to bike over here, chain up their bike and, and go for a walk. Um, it doesn't sound like a crazy idea at all. Um, and, you know, it might make sense. And I might check out what's happening up at the visitor center on the notch and some other locations where we do provide parking and see what's available. There's no fence here. Maybe people would, you know, you're putting in that fence. So maybe there's a place to tie it up to the fence, but um, I'd be thinking about, um, you know, people coming by bike. So anyway, I, I like all of those recommendations and I think they're worth thinking about. So thanks. Well, it did, uh, thinking about the sign and the bike rack and then picking up rubbish and all the, all these things that could happen. Um, I, I think what would be important is to have consistency on signage. And if we do a bike rack here, maybe the town should think of bike racks at other locations too, so that we don't have a mishmash of different kinds of signs. In some places there's a bike, in some places there's not. I suppose that's something to take to uh, Zomac and see, you know, how he let him flush that out. <clears throat> Any yes. other comments uh, or questions for Rob? If um, people attach their bikes to the split rail fence, is it the kind of fence that you could pull the post out of the upright and somebody could loosen the attachment? Yeah, I, I actually don't think that's probably a, you know, a good, good way to attach a bike. You know, those, yeah. those split rail fences are, are not, the posts aren't set in concrete. They're not that stable and secure. Uh, so I think um, I'll take the recommendation to Dave and we'll see if that's, you know, if there's another solution. Yeah, I uh, just, I think people think, oh, well, this is heavy. I can put it here. But I know in Chicago, we used to attach them to like light poles and people would literally three guys that get out there and lift the pole right out of the cement out of the pavement and take the bike off and put it back you know i mean it's amazing what people will do to get the lock off of something so it'd be good to have something more secure that they wouldn't take that risk yep okay any other thoughts i just want to add to my previous comment that seeing the picture of the kiosk really does help and i also agree with some of the folks who said um, maybe moving the trailhead, if it, if it can be and, and wants to be moved to the back of the lot feels like that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm thinking about the trail in Hadley, the Conti um, trail. Sylvia Conti. Yep. Sylvia Conti, yeah. Um, which has kind of the trailhead at the very end of the parking. And it just feels like a very natural progression to kind of um, move toward it in that way and and also a pretty safe way to to, to be as a pedestrian so um, so I, I follow that suggestion as a as a board member <laughs> any other thoughts questions or comments so if not do I hear a motion uh, I move we recommend uh, that we, uh, this is not really to us. Who's it to? It goes to. It's to the building commissioner. <laughs> it's to me. You, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I move that the um, design review board tells the boarding building commissioner we like his idea of yeah. the parking lot and we'll support it. How's that? And then, and then do we want to add and, our own sort of. So oh, suggestion. and then we have a few suggestions and yeah. Maureen can list those after. Oh, sure, <laughs> so uh, okay. maybe uh, consider moving the trailhead south at the end of the parking area. Um, pr uh, look into whether uh, trash and recycling receptacles could be provided as well as a bike rack. And I think that was it. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, is there a second? The trail sign at the road. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Trail sign, yes, yes, yes. A trail sign, say that again. A, a, a sign for the parking area that may be a different one from the sure. trailhead itself. Sure, yeah, like a, park, a larger one. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Do we have it? Is there a second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, raise your hands. I could call you. Okay. Don't you need to do a roll call? Okay, I'll do a roll call. On Zoom. <laughs> 
That's Sorry. right. Uh, I didn't catch who seconded it. The, I didn't. Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay. All right. So uh, let me go through the roll call. Jan. Yes. Lindsay. Yes. Tom. Yes. Erica. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Okay, we have it. Very good. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so Rob. Much. Looking forward to the next ones. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Bye bye. So next, I am making uh, uh, Katie Richardson a panelist. She um, and she works at Fort River Elementary School, and uh, the Fort the elementary school is proposing a mural on the front facing wall to the school. So uh, Katie, um, thanks for joining us. So if you could introduce yourself and um, if possible, if you could share your screen. Katie, I, I think has uh, made some final tweaks to the, the presentation. So you'll, you'll um, if you could show that and just go through what you're, what you're working on. Hi there, sorry, video settings. Um, nice to see you all. I'm Katie Richardson. I coordinate our um, English learner and dual language programs in the Amherst Public Schools. And um, I am here to talk about our mural project for Fort River. Um, we're excited that we were able to get a grant from the local cultural council to support um, some work with an artist. And we had a team of first graders who um, worked with that person over the course of a couple months to come up with this design. Um, and so we're uh, presenting the design and, and in collaboration, of course, with our um, facilities folks to, to deal with the wall and the installation piece. Um, so I'll tell you, well, actually, I did include what I know about that in the, um, in the proposal. And let me see, I'll share my screen here. Um, if you're having difficulty, I, I could share my screen. Okay, I think I got it. Just a sec. I'm more yeah. used to our um, our Google Meet than than the Zoom here, but I got it. Let's see. All right, is that working? Yes. Uh -huh. Great. All right, so here's the crazy view for me of the school that I walk into all the time <laughs> um, to see the, the big roof there. Um, and here's where the school was located in town. Here's the front of the school building. And so we're looking at primarily these two areas, um, this one and this one for these mural panels. Um, and so essentially, you know, as I said, we, we worked with an artist, Fitz Carmel Lamar, um, and we met with him over time with some students and families to uh, come up with this design. And um, it's exciting to see that that process, you know, the kind of back and forth between the, the school and the students. And there was um, there were some surveys that went out to the school community for input, as well as just the ongoing conversation where the, the students would come up with an idea, the artist would draw it, um, would come back with, you know, what about this? Uh, and, you know, that kind of back and forth. So now with that completed design, we'll, we're planning to project the image, um, transfer it over onto fiber cement panel. Um, we were told by, let's see, the facilities director told me that we're required to uh, use a fiber cement board or a fire treated wood. So we went with the fiber cement panel um, in terms of fire code. And so we're hoping to um, transfer that and then paint it. Uh, and then once we're done painting, have it adhered to the, the front of the wall there um, using the, the Tapcon screws. And the hope is that, um, you know, should we ever get a new building or want to move it or need to repair that we could um, you know, take it down if needed. Uh, and there was some consideration about, you know, not wanting to, to trap moisture behind the panel to the wall. Um, though we're in working with Coles, they said, you know, you don't really have to worry about moisture with the cement panel. Um, I've used wood and fabric before for murals, but not the cement panel. So that's new for me. Um, 
let's see what else. And then we're planning to put a mural shield on top that, you know, in case we were to get some graffiti or something like that, it would be easy to, um, to clean up. And there's the overall dimensions of the mural. I, one thing I didn't note here is that um, we do plan to have some space from the ground. Uh, so the, the dimensions that are listed here are just under the overall dimensions of those walls so that we have a gap of, I think about six inches for the sides and the top portion and about a foot at the bottom, um, just in terms of moisture and, and you know, maintenance and things like that. Um, and so here's the design. And this um, cutout here is just because we already have the Fort River School sign right there. So that will be incorporated into it. Um, so lots of things going on there. And I recruited our two um, most um, active participants to uh, record a little bit of their thinking about some parts of the mural. Um, so I can share a couple of those. I'm sure uh, Maureen, you can share this too with folks, right? So I don't have to necessarily play all of them, but I just thought, you know, having the, the student voice here was valuable. So I'll play a little bit. So Leo, what do the flags represent? Um, like all different kinds of cultures and um, represents um, other people or some people that are from different states or worlds, they welcome. So in the mural, we thought of the Toro Coast represents El Salvador, the peacock represents India, and the chickadee, represents Massachusetts and the crane represents Korea. And those are just some of the countries that are represented in our school community, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so, you know, you can see like there's elements throughout um, where we, you know, I tried to note some other things that they didn't talk about, um, but just that they really thought about the symbolism and, and tried to work in, you know, what, what makes Amher special? Um, what are some of the things that folks do in Amherst, things that we care about in the school community, um, things like that. I don't know if you wanna hear more of them or you wanna save them for, for later, but just wanted to share that piece. Um, I'll do, maybe I'll play one, one from each of them on this as well. So we, we thought of soccer to represent that a lot of people like to play that sport. Great. And after the artist worked on it a little bit, you had some suggestions for the artist to change that part. What did you ask for? I asked for there to be more girls instead of boys because there was just boys in the picture before. Awesome. Everyone's represented. And that we know that everybody likes to play soccer in our community, right? Mm -hmm. Girls and boys. Great. Let's see, what's another one? I think this is the um, We thought of the Mary Maple because it's like a tradition and um, also, like, it's like we thought of it also because it's just like summer, it's like Christmas. It's also on every Christmas Friday and it's like Christmas celebrations. Mm -hmm. Great. And it celebrates Christmas, but also any winter tradition, right? In our town. Yeah. Awesome. So there you go. Just a little taste of that. Um, so these are all things that were kind of negotiated throughout with the students. Um, so the We Choose Love is the school slogan and because we have our dual language program growing there um, in, you know, where we're providing instruction in English and Spanish, we wanted to make sure to include the Spanish piece. Um, so the previous, you know, the other side has Elegimos el Amor, which is the same in Spanish. Um, and yet we have, you know, families and, and children from all over the world. And so the flags are, are representing that. 
um, both in terms of you know folks who have come to our community, but also the cultural heritage of folks in our community. So I think that's all. Um, happy to answer any questions if I can. Could you explain? I'm not still not sure where it's being placed. It, it, the arrows are going to two different locations. Um, the front of the school. Okay. Yep. It's go, so going this to panel be, is on this side, and this panel is on this side. Okay. So on the brick. All piece. right. Yeah. So it's going to take up the. Looks like there's sort of. Okay, maybe it's a flagpole in there. Okay, never mind. I think I, it's a light. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So oh, all right, now I understand. Yeah. And you're going to project it, almost. Then it becomes sort of like paint by numbers. Kind of, yeah. So okay. we'll have the students kind of trace it and then be able to go back with, you know, mix different Those, colors and because yeah. we want to have the students involved and, and hopefully families as well throughout the summer. So just making it not too complicated. We tried to do kind of... Um, it seems pretty complicated. Uh, uh, maybe you've got some people who can fine tune. I mean, I'm looking at some of the things. Yes. Uh, the, I mean, people on bicycles. I mean, granted, it's going to be bigger than I'm looking now, but, you know, some of that's going to require a fairly skilled artist. I yep. suppose you've, okay, you thought that. Yeah, no, I, so I think we'll have a back and forth. Um, we certainly want our Fort River community to be involved, um, but there are some adults, some parents, and also some high school students oh. that will be supporting uh -huh. um, through the process, so. Okay, okay. Uh, questions or comments from the rest of the board? Anybody have any impressions, suggestions? Nothing? <laughs> well, I'll just say that I usually hate murals on public <laughs> buildings, but I really like this because it really gives the school a fun and colorful um, aspect yeah. with a great message. And so unlike some of the others that I've tried to stop over the years. I'll <laughs> say this is okay. I was waiting to hear your comment because I, <laughs> I know your stand on that sort of thing. I thought, oh boy, I don't know how she's gonna accept this one, but it is. Also, great. this building is not so architecturally significant that it really makes That's that right. great difference. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, it seems like just having the color and the energy will be a really nice thing for the yes. this school. Yeah. You know, it's not the colored doors are, are inviting, but the building itself is not particularly inviting. No, so, no. and it may and not. You be can take it down because it's on those boards. It's not permanently. It's not going to yes. wear and age on the building. And yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, very colorful. I agree. I think that's a that's an important thing for me was knowing that it would be um, removable at some point um, uh -huh. in a in a relatively easy way because brick is not something you can kind of just wash off that easily if you wanted yeah. to return it to its original state. So yeah. I think that's a great choice and, and probably make the process a lot easier and more inclusive because then we can reach the top. Yeah. Um, but no, I, my, my kids both went there, my daughter's still there. Um, and so yeah, walking in through the colored doors is fun, but I think this will be great. And there's a little path on the right side that this will go past. So um, yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. And um, I'm excited to see uh, the students get involved and, uh, and making this come to life. Awesome. Are you going to help paint? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> I'm coordinating, so I'll, I'll be there through a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll need an invitation. <laughs> Any other? Uh, 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 Lindsay or Erica? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. I, I also love this. I think it's fantastic. Um, it, you know, I think in this beginning, in this presentation stage, it has a kind of um, clip arty feel to it that will inevitably go away, um, you know, with the, with the, everybody getting involved in the painting. And I, I tried to look up um, some of Mr. Lamar's work and I, he has like, you know, a really amazing way of painting um, faces and bodies that has a lot of character. And I, I'm eager to see the finished product because I think it'll have even more life than we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. um, it's true. He does have a very painterly style, but because we knew we wanted to be able to get lots of folks involved without having to, you know, deal with all of that kind of, you know, how would we shade things? We said, you know, let's go for silhouettes and kind yeah. of simplify it a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a smart move. Um, my one critique is that the, the mountains in one of your detail views was labeled as 
referring to the seven sisters and our mountain range has a really significant and recognizable profile that we're not seeing here and that's like the one place where I feel like I could make any critique because otherwise I think it's pretty great so if you want it to be the seven sisters then maybe to look at you know a photograph of the profile of the mountain range and, and incorporate that Definitely. I agree. He, I, you know, we asked him because first he had some that were kind of more like the Rockies and it's like, no, 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 <laughs> we have a mountain range. So I think that this did come from an image of it, but I agree. It doesn't have the characteristic, um, the way that I would see the shape, right? So I agree. And that can be a subtle shift. Okay. Um, I'll just add that I, I think this is wonderful and I'm excited to see it come to life. Um, I wonder two things. Um, about the landscaping that you can see in the front left side and the bushes, if what your plans are for those. Um, and then secondly, if, um, if you might plan to incorporate some kind of um, plaque or information about the artist and the involvement from you know, the, the effort of the students and yourself, kind of the project information. And if well, so, where that, where that might go? Yeah, great question. Um, so I have to work with facilities to figure out whether we want to remove any of those bushes or whether we want to kind of make the bike path go above and, you know, try to like work around it a little bit more. Um, we're already planning to be a foot up off the ground, but it's, you know, that's probably three feet or something. So yeah, that it's a negotiation with them. Yeah. Um, but yes, great point. Yeah. And the plaque, yes. I'm thinking probably that we would put it on, it's hard to tell here, but there's um, a wall right here that goes sort of, let's say perpendicular, no, yes, perpendicular um, to the front facing wall. So it kind of turns the bend right there and there's a shorter wall. So I think that would be a good place to put a small plaque um, and certainly have the kids right. and families who participate could sign it and we could write, you know, from, um, to acknowledge the cultural council and things like that. It could also be interesting as part of the landscaping discussion to consider something that's that's like ground mounted or like embedded in the ground as an informational mm. back yeah. location. Um, you know, that you could have something that, some kind of signage that um, is anchored into the ground that has, um, you could do it on both sides, perhaps even depending on how much information you have. Yeah, that's a good thought. We can check in with them and see what, you know, what's the preference and because it would be a little more visible that way, potentially. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other suggestions or thoughts? I think the school could use a punch of color as could Amherst, so <laughs> you're doing everybody a big favor by you know, bringing this uh, to the public. Yeah, it's really, uh, okay. <clears throat> if I don't hear any other comments, do we have a, uh, a motion? Move to like approve. That? Okay, move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it and our, should we add our three suggestions? Yes. Uh, okay. Maureen, are you picking up the- uh, you, uh, Give me one second. Okay. Um, Uh, well, there was a suggestion about the plaque, um, having a plaque, and you know, either it's going to be at that wall where Katie had suggested, or perhaps uh, ground mounted. Um, and it's not Landscape, landscaping. The bushes. Yeah. So, does it sound like folks are fine if they do some heavy pruning or removal or? Yeah, we're just saying, think about it in terms think about of impact. It. Yep. I don't think we're trying to dictate. What right, okay. yeah. Okay, and what but was the, the third? Was seven there a third? Sisters revising oh, thank you. the image of the Seven Sisters. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Okay, all right, anything else? Okay, so moved and seconded. I'll take a vote. Uh, Lindsay? Yes. Hey, okay, Erica? Yes or nay, yay or nay? Yay. <laughs> okay. Jan? Yay. Yeah. Tom? Yay. Okay. Catherine? Yes. Okay. There you go. Great. Good luck. Thanks, Thanks Katie. So <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. It's really nice. 
I think that Marina, those are the only two things on our yeah. agenda. We have uh, the minutes. Katie, could you uh, stop your share? I wonder if I can, I'll just do yeah. that. Okay. You get it? okay. Yeah. Great. And you're free to stay or go. Um, we're going to move on. Um, so mm -hmm. thanks everyone about, um, about indicating your availability for the next meeting regarding 11 and 15 East Pleasant Street. So um, I'm actually just looking at it now. Um, so um, it looks like, I don't know if folks wanna look at your calendar. Um, Tuesday, July 13th works and uh, July 19th, Monday, July 19th and Tuesday, July 20th all work. So I don't know if anyone. Could you, could you repeat that? Sorry. I oh yeah, sure. Yep. Um, hold on. I just, uh, so Tuesday, July 13th, uh, Monday, July 19th and Tuesday, July 20th. And everyone had indicated that it worked with them. And um, I'm actually going on vacation at the, on the, on the 22nd. So if I could have a, a, a slight um, plug, I the sooner the better uh, would be preferred, but. Um, I'm fine with the 13th if that's the best for, okay. if that works for others. Okay. Does that work for everyone? Yep. Okay. Sure. July yeah, 13th. and then we have the, we can fall back on the later date if we need to. That oh, that's sense. a really good point, yep. Uh, so July 13th for 11 EP, and I believe I emailed everyone the applications um, just through the OneDrive. I will be putting them on the website on the calendar as I'm starting to do that, but I, yeah. I just wanted to get that to you all um, as soon as possible. And that's it. I don't know if there's any members of the public. No, there aren't. So we can skip um, the general public comment period. Yeah, I wanted to ask. Um, uh, at this, when we walked around, when we had the site review, you gave us that really incredible set of uh, colored uh, descriptions and plans. Uh, can we still rely on those uh, or will we be able to determine if there are changes that would mean that they, those, uh, the renderings you gave us were no longer uh, relevant to what, yeah. Yeah, good question, Catherine. So I can certainly give everyone hard copies of the updated plan set. Um, and I, I give I, 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 hard copies. I mean, just send them out and we can look at them. Yeah, I, I, I believe I emailed everyone electronic copies. If, if yeah. folks would like a hard copy, let me know. If you don't, that's uh, fine too. Do I favor, but Catherine, they are, there are subtle differences throughout all of them. I just went over them for historical commission. Yeah. Oh, okay. You pick. Or don't up. use the old ones. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, for the first, the original set, I uh, I typed up a project application report, which was a review of of it of the project. So if folks find it helpful, I could update that to reflect the the changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I didn't. Uh, the, the, I looked at both uh, sets that you forwarded uh, apparently with the revised editions, but. Uh, maybe I didn't go far enough or deep enough, but I couldn't <laughs> pick out the subtle changes. And uh, yeah, so I want to be sure I know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, anything else for that? Um, so we have two sets of minutes, Maureen, did you? What? Unfortunately, I, I have been sort of straight out working oh, okay. on other All items, right. I so thought apologies. Okay, very good. So there's no further business until we meet again. And will we continue? To, oh, I know. I had one thought that maybe we should think about is uh, eventually we can't Zoom. And that means we will have to meet in person. And I'm wondering if we should not establish a couple of dates, maybe two per month, so that, uh, and if people don't get their requests to us, by our meeting date that they're gonna to have to wait until another meeting date because sometimes we have, we, there are times we have to run downtown for one little uh, presentation. And I'm just thinking, uh, I think we're gonna, we're going, we spoiled now, 
and uh, going forward, whether it be better to have a formal date set aside so people would know to, that they have to bring it on, you know, the second Tuesday of the month or the third Tuesday. Uh, as, yeah, that's a great question, Catherine. I appreciate you bringing it up. When do we expect to return to in person? Do we have an idea? That's a good question. Um, I don't have an answer other than the town manager said that we're all boards and committees will hold virtual meetings in, until September and then we'll re uh -huh. we'll loop back yeah. and figure uh -huh. out what the if the right. law has changed or yeah. or what the town what does the state dictate ultimately and if they're and then what does the town want to do if yeah as well. Right. Well, my impression is that Paul said that what that there won't be any exceptions. Everybody's going to have to meet in person. Like we can't say uh, the design review board wants to keep zooming because he was pretty firm about that. Once we go that way, uh, there will not, not be any exceptions. So. I'm thinking, well, uh, yeah. we have some time, uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so if folks. Um, would like to have sort of a um, like an official schedule. So we just meet as needed. I sent out a doodle poll. Um, if folks want to have a a set schedule where we meet, you know, the second Tuesday of each month, uh, either once a week, once a month or twice a month, mm -hmm. um, just so you have it sort of in your calendar, as Catherine was saying, it's sometimes a nuisance to come down to to uh to town hall just for one application so then if there, if we did meet as a group once a month then folks would just have to wait until mm -hmm. that that one meeting or 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 um or even whatever while we're meeting virtually i'd like to have that because like i just had a historical commission meeting last night that lasted three hours and then i turn around and there's this one and it'd be nice to know ahead which week i have this so that when i'm you know, when we're doing the other meetings, I can say, well, that's not a good week for me or something, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's just too much sometimes to have these one right after the other. And we have been meeting as you get applications. It'd be better if the applicant knew it's yeah. either this date or this date in a month. Yeah. Yeah. We don't necessarily have to meet both dates, but right. if we had those, we could pick one of one or yeah. the other. I think that would be probably the most professional one, you know, business-like way to approach this because I think my experience on design maybe board and Jan and I have been on at the same length of time right. is that, that the pattern has been somebody has an applicant oh we got to run and have a meeting well maybe we do and maybe we don't maybe we could say well you know sorry you missed that date um, you'll have to come back I, you know I don't want to see it give us more importance than we <laughs> maybe we deserve or have but um, I think something more uh, more efficient would be to everybody's benefit. So is uh, there, a, I, I think that generally this board meets on Monday nights or Tuesday nights. Um, is, is there a night that you have a preference? Maybe I could do a doodle poll of, um, all, you know, Mondays, um, you know, to see wh which sort of um, week works best for you, or or did you want to hash this out kind of now, or just think about it? Well, yeah, um, I don't know. yeah, I, I I don't know what the, maybe the maybe, I don't know how a doodle poll kind of captures, but if we could list um, standing meetings. You know, I, I teach on Mondays until 5.15, so I could do it, but it would have to be after 5.30. Yeah. So I could get off campus. Um, so maybe you know, would it make sense if, if each of you email me your sort of general schedule for yeah, like a 5 yeah. to 6.30 yeah. range? Yeah, that would help, I think. Um, yeah, and it could be for not Friday, but any anything Monday through Thursday. Yeah. Well, I'll just, I'll just say that Wednesdays are going to be really Wednesday, hard. Yeah, because I'm going to go straight through to an Midnight. eleven o'clock. No, meeting. I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm always trying to. I'm always thinking of you, Tom, yeah. when I schedule these. And I will say that I actually do try my hardest to um, schedule these meetings when there is at least two applications. Oh yeah, I think yeah, I think we um, have. Uh, I think that has worked pretty well, uh, but I'm. Uh, I'm just thinking maybe a set date 
would um, make life a little easier for everybody. So. Okay. So d does it, uh, do folks feel that they could um, just email me and I'll take a look at it, compile sure. them in a so maybe you want to email or something. Just uh, consider two days, um, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we know Wednesday is out. Should we want to throw a Thursday in there, or should we try to work with a Monday and Tuesday? Uh, Sounds like Monday's bad for Erica. So why don't we say Tuesday or Thursday? Yeah, okay. if we're talking about starting at five o'clock. All right. Um, okay. Good. So and then Catherine, are you thinking of holding space for two meetings a week? Say every other. We are well, first and third, and then we would cancel a meeting if there's yeah, nothing. That would be what, um, well, I don't know. I, I'm agreeable to just one a month, but a month. sometimes people come along and they seem to need it right away before they go to the planning board. Um, so I, and that, and if we keep it to two, then we could essentially end up with one little um, uh, petition uh, which is really what we're trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. So I know I'm sort of talking in circles. What do the rest of you think? What do you think, Maureen? Could we do one, one a month? We could try it. Yeah, yeah. You know, for the ZBA, for instance, uh, they meet twice a month on Thursdays, on the second and fourth Thursday of each month. And for the rare occasion, uh, there's only, if there's just one application on the agenda, I tell them, sorry, Okay. We'll handle you next time. Good. So uh, uh, if it's like a small application, so I, I would, uh, unless I sort of got okay. some sort of massive pushback, that's what I would do in, um, in, in, in a scenario with, the, with this board. If it was just one application, I, okay. I would, I would tell them that we will handle it at the next meeting, unless they are very adamant for any okay. reason. So does that mean we're sort of trending to putting it twice a month and then, but perhaps doing as you suggest, trying to keep them, uh, the bulk of them, put, try to do all in one, or I don't know, I'm just blabbering now. Maybe, yeah. what do you think, Jan? Should we do one a month or two Let's a month? Let's pick one date. If we um, can't, if for some reason a whole slew come in the day after or before she can get it to us, we know that's the best day of the week and maybe always have a backup two weeks later, but let's just have one date a month. Okay, let's do one. Anybody and also, it? you all might consider when we start meeting in person again, yes. we used to meet back in the day, we used to meet at seven because that's when parking becomes free. Um, some of the parking like on Spring yeah. Street, not all of it. And I don't know, I always feel as a volunteer, then also having to pay parking is just like, one brick too many i don't know so unless that's a real hardship it helps the day be fully finished in terms of work and teaching and you can get a bite to eat and stuff and then do it if you really want to do it early i don't know then we need one of those bike kiosks and stuff <laughs> <laughs> well i think actually it wasn't at six o'clock it becomes free but sometimes you come down particularly on a thursday there's no parking which is mm -hmm. another issue. So, I guess it was six for some of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's six, but they're, but they're the slots. I mean, they're <laughs> they're parked. Everybody's parked in them. So I don't like having to roam around Amherst to find a place to park so I can come to the town hall and go to a meeting. But that's what we'll have to do. So maybe Tuesday would be a better date to shoot for because I, it's not as busy downtown as it is on Thursday and Friday. Well, we have a couple of months before we have to worry yeah, about that. Yeah, we do. That. Okay. Three months. okay. Um, two notes. So these are both my personal situation. Um, one is that five o'clock is definitely easier for me, but I could do five thirty if that is any more okay. helpful. Um, just because I'm needed for family reasons by six thirty. Um, that doesn't mean I can't make an exception, but it's just a generally difficult thing for me to manage. So that's my own personal request is that we try to shift it as close to five as possible, but I can be flexible up to a point. Um, and then secondly, I have another child coming September, beginning of September. So um, I don't expect, sorry, I don't expect that that means I can't um, participate, but there may be a couple weeks where 
I have to you have better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> I might be slightly busy. <laughs> so um, just a note that early September to anytime late August to early September, um, I may not be available for meetings. Okay. But I well, think we have we... enough for a quorum, right? Without yeah. me. Yeah. So why don't we send Maureen our uh, best and worst scenarios for meeting. And I think we said Tuesdays and Thursdays, see how that works out and keep Zooming as long as we can. Um, is that okay, Maureen? Anybody yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah. All right, anything else that we wanna chew over? If not, do I, I hear- I move we adjourn. Oh, thank you. Any, uh, do I hear a second for that? Traditionally, it's Tom. Okay, yeah. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, can I just say all in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. aye. 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 Anybody opposed to adjourning? <laughs> okay. Have a great all right. night, folks. So then, everyone. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you on July 13th. Yes. Very 